Hey guys, what's up? So, I got some exciting news today. Uh, the DJI Air 2S finally got a C1 label. So, what does that mean? That means that you basically can fly your DJI Air 2S in the A1 category in Europe. So, that's like the same category where the DJI um, Mini uh, is, the Mini Pro, the Mavic 3, the Mavic Air 3 and whatever. Air 2S was one of the last drone that wasn't there and because it's, a, it's an old drone, like an old drone, like it's three years old or something, I think it's from 2021. So, I wasn't even expecting that it would get it. But at the end of the year 2023, uh, DJI put on the their website and also on Facebook that uh, the Air 2S will get the C1 label. So that's like really amazing because my drone I really went up in value, I bought some new batteries and the thing was uh, DJI said that it would happen at the end of uh, January but then it was postponed like for two times and then basically it now finally came out on April 11th. So I'm really happy about it. It means that my drone is now illegal to fly in Europe, like in uh, urban areas. I actually didn't think the drone will ever get the C1 label because the Mavic uh, or the DJI L3 was already released. So I thought like, okay, DJI is just um, like in this phone fall and we won't get a C1 label. So basically uh, this drone will be together with the Mavic uh, Air 2, the first one in the A3 category where you could fly it actually nowhere except for a field or a forest or whatever outside of uh, uh, like um, you know urban areas so I'm so happy that DJI did this thank you DJI you did really a great job by giving us this opportunity to use this drone otherwise I would have sold it so I'm really happy it opens so many doors for this drone and basically like I said the value goes up and also because it was a drone with uh, a one inch sensor and 20 megapixels it was a really really good drone so it would be a pity if this drone uh, wasn't getting the C1 label. So what you need like to uh, fly now in the A1 is update your uh, Mavic Air 2S, do your test, the A1, the A3 and maybe also the A2 if you want, get an insurance and register your drone for remote ID. Okay, so here we have the little guy. I will go over all the different settings that you have to set up, the update, I will show you like uh, where the drone now belongs, in what class, and um, let's do that. Also, before I continue with the video and you like how my voice is sounding, this is the mic that I'm using. It's the Holy Land Lark M2. It is a really small magnetic microphone that is attached to me with a magnet and uh, the receiver is on my camera and it's basically uh, wireless. So it's really nice, so you can run around and everything. I will do a review on that one later, but I really want to thank Hollyland for uh, giving me one of these mics uh, because I think it sounds amazing for such a small piece of equipment. Well, so as you can see here, I'm already updating the drone. So what you have to do is just plug, uh, just turn on the drone. And after that, you can basically search from the firmware update and then um, it will start updating. So as you can see, DJI Air 2S, edit support to reset all settings and clear all data if you want that. Edit support for EU C1 certification. Edit support for remote ID requirements of some countries and regions. So if you live in Europe, you need remote ID. So this is important for you. Okay, so once you updated this, uh, there are some more steps that you have to do and I will show you and walk you through them. Okay, when you're on this page, you press service. Okay, when you're on the service page, you choose the CX label request and then it opens up this page. Um, okay, so basically on this, um, on this page, then you see your drone with the serial number, you add an address, so you put in your name and all the stuff that you need to fill in. The C1 label will be shipped around 20 working days. Need to upload three photos for approval, left front arm with uh, label sticker, three left side of aircraft with label sticker, four battery compartment with new blank label sticker, five. You can check the progress of the application through uh, the web page that you can see there. Then you do submit and basically what will happen in 20 days you will get the sticker. One sticker will be like, there will be like uh, 
the C1, that will be the C1 label. It will be like a, a number one with some circle on it that you put on your drone. Then one sticker will be like something that you put in the battery compartment. It was, I saw it, it was like some black sticker. And then uh, another one uh, that you basically should put on the side. And there you can see the decibels and uh, that you have the C1 certification. Once you have all those on your drone, you take photos of it, then you upload it to DJI and you send it to them again. So they have like a proof that you did it, that everything is on your drone. And once they have all the info, um, you can start flying in the A1 category. And as you can see, here we have application received application number and then a number. The class identification label is expected to be shipped around 20 working days. You can check the application status true and then the web page. So you can track your application there in the app. So basically, uh, if you want to know how um, the progress is, you can always do that. Okay. Uh, as you can see, FlySafe data failed to update. I had some issues with uh, FlySafe data. I don't know why, but if you don't update it, you don't have the option to put into remote ID and you don't have the other options that you need like to be uh, compliant. So um, what you have to do if it doesn't update for you, log out, log in if it still doesn't work, uh, reinstall the DJI uh, Fly app and try it again and update everything that you can, can update on your drone and then it should work you should basically then be able uh, to add uh, the remote ID into your drone. So once you have that, you go to safety and completely to the bottom. At the bottom, you put in your operator registration number. That is the number that you got from EASA after you completed your uh, A1, A2, A3. Um, you actually only have to do A1 and A3 now. Uh, if you uh, want, you can do also A2. So basically for this, you need only A1 and A3. Uh, after that you get this code and that code you put in and those last then what you have to do is uh, put this code also on your drone but without those last three axes that you see you will have like uh, a hyphen and then three axes those three axes are just for you you can't share them with anyone or they can basically act that they are you you know they can use your code and they can fly with your drone yeah, not with your drone, but with their drone and it looks like it was you flying. So what is written here? Remote ID is the ability of a drone in flight to provide identification and location information that can be received by others. To comply with applicable rules, the remote ID may collect and broadcast information such as registration number, geographical position from you as well. So what this means is that basically when you're flying somewhere, like let's say in a city, and um, the person has in installed the app that can actually read the remote ID because your drone will be broadcasting um, via Wi-Fi its remote ID. So someone else can scan your drone and all the information, so your name and everything will pop up on their screen on their phone. Um, I'm not sure now how that app is called. I would have to look for it. Um, I'll put it in the description below, but I don't know how many people already use the app at this point. Um, but it's basically for that. It's, it's actually like, let's say that there is a drone flying above your house and you notice that it's staying there. And for a, a long period of time, you can pull out your phone, point it at it, and it will show the registration. If it doesn't show it, you can basically, um, maybe call the police or whatever. I don't know. I never had this, I don't fly above people's houses, but that is basically how it works. So drones are kind of regulated and um, we know who is flying above our home. So um, that's why this whole um, remote identification is needed. Okay, so you understand it. Uh, I will go with you over all the different uh, uh, classes we have for drones. So. As you can see, privately built and C0 under 250 grams. That means basically as if you just like me built FPV drones, I can build my own FPV drones that weighs 150 grams with remote ID on it and I can fly it in the C0 category. Uh, that means, or yeah, in the C0 class, sorry. That means that I can fly it also in A1, just like the Air 2S can now fly in the A1. Um, also, um, my privately built FPV drones under 250 grams can fly there. Um, 
So see, as you can see, the C1 category, there is actually, that is actually where the Air 2S is, uh, the Mavic uh, 3, the Air 3, and all these other drones. So these are in the A1, but they can also fly in the category A3. So if you have your license for A1 and A3, you can fly basically in both, but A1 is the one where you can fly uh, also in some urban areas. But as you can see, uh, the operational restrictions um, may fly over uninvolved people, should be avoided when, pos uh, when possible. So, no flying over assemblies of people. So what does that mean? So let's say you are like flying in the city, like filming some church or whatever, and uh, suddenly someone runs under your drone. It can happen. That is okay. You should try to avoid it. But if it happens, it's okay. You cannot fly over assemblies of people. What are assemblies of people? That are like, I don't know from what number, but let's say from 10 or whatever, you can probably find it what, how many it is. But if you just are thinking logically, it means you cannot fly above crowds. Like don't go into some like uh, um, shopping street or whatever, or there is somewhere like a concert or whatever. Don't fly your drone there. You cannot, uh, that is against the law. So for the C0 category, drone operator registration, no unless camera sensor on board and a drone is not a toy. So basically once you have a camera, you have to registrate how I understand. Uh, you don't need no training for those. And if you fly in the C0 category, then uh, you can fly under, if you fly under 250 grams, um, you have to be 16 and there is no minimum age if the drone is a toy. So that's that. Okay, so now the C1 class, that's the, the class where the Air 2S is in. So, can also fly in the separate category A3, like I said. No flying expected over uninvolved people. If it happens, should be minimized. Okay, so I was kind of wrong because in the C0 category, you can fly over people, but um, should be avoided. You can fly over them, but should be avoided. Uh, so basically more in the C1 category, is no flying expected over number of people. If it happens, should be minimized. No flying over assemblies of people. It doesn't matter what drone you have, you cannot fly over assemblies of people. You gotta have the drone operator registration. So what does that mean? That's the A1 and the A3 or the A2 um, test that you can do on the EASA website with the license and everything. And you see complete online training and pass online theoretical exam. And the minimum age for that is 16, just like for the C0 class. Okay, so now we go to the C2 class. And the C2 class, those are drones under four kilograms. So basically, um, the Mavic 3 Pro is in that category. So what does that mean? Uh, you have to take one more test. It's, it's a little harder, that one. And you have to do it with your webcam turned on and you have to do it like in some special browser so they can see that you are basically not cheating. Um, you can do it probably also in all the aviation authorities in your countries. But if you go to drone class, there you can do it. I paid, I think, 120 euros for that. And with that license or with that test, you can also get your operator's license. And that one is also valid in all the European countries. So when you're like, let's say from the United States and you come to Europe, uh, the first thing that you should do is take the A1, A2 and A3 or just the A1 and A3 and then you should register as an operator here. Um, so yeah, you should basically do it in the first country where you come. So uh, when you come into, I don't know, whatever, uh, Spain or France or whatever, uh, then you should do it there. And that license is valid everywhere. If I have to give you a tip, uh, Malta and Luxembourg are two countries that are really easy um, where you can get these uh, operator's licenses. I don't know about other countries how that works, but like in my country, Slovakia, it was really hard to get this license. A lot of people, what they did, they went to other countries and got it there. So you can also do that. So in the A2 category, no flying over uninvolved people, keep horizontal distance of 30 meter from uninvolved people. So that means if you're flying in a city and you see that there are, it is a crowded place, you have to be 30 meters from those people. So if you are 50 meters up, you have to be 30 meters further away. 
uh, like horizontally, you know. This can be reduced to five meters if flow speed function is activated. So this means like if you have the CD mode uh, on your Mavic, then you can activate that. And that means that you can then basically, if you're going really, really slow, you can fly closer to those people. Um, so yeah, uh, drone operator registration, yes. Um, then read user manual, complete online training, pass online theoretical exam, conduct and declare self-practical training. So that means that you basically have to train yourself in the field. Like, yeah, I mean, um, before in my country, we had to really go like to the airfield and do a real test, like a real practical test, like with someone from the aviation authority that dropped now completely. And now you can do this. So um, you should basically know how to operate your drone. So if you're flying a drone, you should basically train yourself. So that's what they mean by that. Uh, pass a written exam at the NAA or a recognized, enti uh, recognized entity. Uh, so that means the National Aviation Authority. So basically that's the authority uh, of the country where you live. So you can also find it on the ASA website. There you can see like for every country what the website is for the Aviation Authority and then you can um, do it there. And also 16 as the minimum age. Then you have C3, C4 and privately built drones under 25 kilograms. Um, you see, do not fly near people, fly outside of urban areas, 150 meter distance. Um, drone operator registration, yes. Read user manual, complete online training, pass online theoretical exam and the age is the same. So, so what drones are in the C3, C4 and privately built? So basically every drone that doesn't have a C1 rating or a C2 rating. So basically before the 11th of April, you couldn't fly your air to s uh, near to people. You couldn't fly it in urban areas. You had to be 150 meters outside of the urban areas and um, basically, yeah, you couldn't fly it inside a city. You had to go on a field somewhere 150 meters from every house, like uh, in the area. So what drones do basically still belong in this category? Uh, the Mavic uh, Pro, Mavic Pro 2, uh, Mavic 2 Zoom, uh, the Air 2, the first one, not the S, um, the Avata, and all the other drones that, have, that you have from Xiaomi, Hubson, or whatever, I think they all of them don't have a C rating. So basically with all those drones, you cannot fly inside the city. You have to like obey these laws. You don't um, basically have remote ID. It's really good that we have the C1 label now, because as you can see, it will really bring the value of your Mavic Air 2S up. If DJI would have decided they wouldn't um, basically uh, give it the C1 label, I probably would have sold it. But now for me, this is uh, really nice. Okay, so let's say you want to fly your DJI Inspire like uh, somewhere like in the city or like in an urban area, then you need a specific license. Uh, for the specific license, you also need an operator's manual and you need to register some more stuff at the Aviation Authority. So, but that is like a whole nother topic. Uh, later, I also want to get the specific license, but for now, I uh, don't need it. Also, if you want to fly FPV, you can fly FPV, but you need a spotter. So someone has to stand next to you and tell you like if there is no danger or some people like running under the drone or whatever. There always has to be someone who is looking at your drone uh, line of sight. Um, so that's also uh, how you can fly FPV. Okay, guys, so I hope that I explained everything as uh, best that I could. Uh, so like if there are some things that you still need to know and you want to ask me, uh, feel free to put it in the comments below. I'll try to answer you. If I made some mistakes, uh, please correct me. Uh, these new laws are also new for me. So I'm trying to like study um, all of them so I know like uh, what's legal. So um, feel free to ask me whatever you want. And I hope that you're also really happy with the news that the DJI uh, Air 2S is now uh, uh, C1 uh, certified or how to say it. So, okay guys, thank you and have a nice day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.